Have you ever taken a picture of something that's got uprights in it and then when you look at the shot you discover that your uprights are not upright. They're bending around, they're either converging or diverging in the picture. Let me show you what I mean. We've got a square sign just here, or rather an oblong sign. If I take a picture of it from normal perspective, sort of standing up here like this, as you can see, the shot, the sign, is wider at the top than it is at the bottom. The verticals are going away like that. They're diverging in the picture because it's getting wider as you look up the shot. If we get down low, the opposite's going to happen. I photograph it from down here, looking up at it. And now it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So why does it happen? If you don't have the sensor in your camera parallel to the thing you're photographing, then one edge of it is going to be closer than the other. So when we're looking down on something like this, the top of the sensor is closer to the top of the board, which makes it wider. The distance between the bottom of the sensor and the bottom of the board is it's further away, and that's what makes those verticals narrow to the bottom. The same is true the other way up. When I'm looking up at something, like you would with a building or something like that, the verticals are narrowing as we look away. So the way to straighten these verticals up is to make sure that your sensor is absolutely parallel to the thing you're taking a picture of. <clears throat> so if I line myself up with the middle of this board, about here, forward a bit, fill the frame. Now, if you take a bit of care, you can really get it spot on. I'm doing it quickly just to show you. There you go. That's pretty much straight, isn't it? The question that's going through your mind is, well, what am I going to do when I've got a skyscraper or a building or something tall to photograph? Because I can't levitate. Strangely, neither can I. So what we need to do is to go and find a nice tall structure. And the way to do it is catch a ferry. And what could be more vertically challenging for a photographer than a lighthouse? Converging verticals can make for some very, very dramatic imagery. I mean, we just noticed, look at the lighthouse here with the sun coming around the edge of it. If I just take a very wide angle shot with the window in the bottom corner and the sun just kissing around the edge of it. That's quite a cool picture really, isn't it? But really we're here to control convergence as much as we possibly can. So come with me, I got sidetracked. In that shot I just took at the base of the lighthouse there, I was looking straight up and making use of converging verticals to make a dramatic image. But as I said, we're not supposed to be playing with them, we're supposed to be looking at ways to correct them. Now you could go out and spend a pile of money on a shift tilt lens, which is a brilliant piece of kit, which will correct all your vertical problems forever, but it's going to cost you many hundreds of pounds, and I'm looking for a more low cost, low tech way of doing things. Let's just recap quickly. So if the camera is tilted compared to your verticals, you're going to get convergence. So if I'm using a short wide angle lens like this 10 millimeter, and I'm down here looking through the grasses because I think it'll make a nice shot, and it will, what I get is super massive convergence going on. As you can see, the whole thing is bending in towards the middle, isn't it? Now I know you can see the right hand side of the lighthouse is curling in more than the left, but if the lighthouse was smack in the middle of the shot, it would be doing the same equally on both sides. I included the square building on the left because I like the blockiness of it, but you can see it's curling that in towards the middle of the picture too. The whole thing is tapering off towards a point. But watch, just by standing up, this is all I'm doing, look, I haven't done anything else, and taking the same shot, that has minimized convergence dramatically. What's the next step? Let's move back, come on. Just by walking back over here, I'm gonna zoom my lens. I wanna make the lens longer and move myself back. You might have heard me go on about this before. I love this stuff. Looking through the viewfinder, I need to keep going until I get my composition right. So, keep coming back. That's about there. If I take the shot again, but I've doubled the focal length, I'm at 20 millimeters and I'm standing up. Let's take that shot again. Here it comes and that's even better, isn't it? 
let's keep going and see what happens. I'm going to have to change lenses because I've run out of focal length on this one, my little wide angle zoom. So let's put on a longer lens. Oh, haven't got enough hands. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just making the focal length a little bit longer again. I want to get as far away as I can, and that's probably going to be up against here. Now, if I just recompose my shot, focus on the lighthouse, and huh, that's almost perfect, isn't it? Why is it happening? Well, it's because when we're right underneath the lighthouse, the camera is like this. So my sensor is at this angle, but the lighthouse is at that angle. As we move back, if I didn't tilt the camera down, I'd be looking at sky, wouldn't I? So as I'm coming back, I'm tilting the camera down. As you can see, as I tilt the camera down, it's bringing this angle and that angle closer together. So the convergence decreases. There's one other thing I could do here because I'm quite lucky in that I've got some stone steps. So let's raise myself up a bit and see what happens. I want to get as high as I can, so I'm going to stand right up here. I now must be a good, what, eight or ten feet higher up than I was over there. Let's recompose the shot and take a look. Oh, I can see straight away. That is better. That is much better. Yes, as you flick between those two, yeah, there's quite a difference, even just coming up here. It's quite astonishing, isn't it? Now, if we had permission, which we don't, to enter and film in a National Trust property, we could climb up on top of this wall here. We could pay the entrance fee and go into the castle. From there, you're going to be much, much higher up, and it's far more likely you'll be able to get a nice straight picture of the lighthouse. Now there's of course software you could use, programs like Adobe Photoshop, they have straightening tools within them which will help, but the better quality, the more straight you have your verticals in the image file, the better job you'll be able to make in post-production. Now there's one final little thing I have to confess. This lighthouse is a bit narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. Lighthouses do that, but I have to say it's nothing like as narrow at the top in reality as it is in that picture. <laughs>